The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour, also author of The Opening Call, daily newsletter, very comprehensive daily newsletter. goes out every single day, uh, even on weekends. I try to get at least one uh, uh, prepared um, set of notes ready for the Monday opening call. And uh, we start sending it out Saturday. So um, this is going to be very interesting because <clears throat> here we are. The Dow's down only 23. However, it was at a high of 27,745. Now 120 points lower than that. Now, of course, this uh, impeachment uh, process is going to be uh, debilitating to a certain extent. But you've got to think, wow, what residual strength the market has. <clears throat> Look at this. This is an island reversal. Usually that's very bullish. Uh, and, and then all of a sudden you get the bearish news. And yet it is holding pretty well, except for one little thing. I'd spent a lot of time for the past many weeks talking about this, showing this, one of the Chapman Wave techniques we discussed. My subscribers and I, um, we were using this all the time. I show it, I demonstrate it. Uh, let me just go all the way through to back here. You remember, this is the moving average. This is the green line period moving average. Here's the black moving average, the 14. When the green crosses under the black, turns pink, it's negative. When it crosses back over, it goes light green, and that's positive. But um, I use other methodologies. And what I've said is these moving averages are their very nature make them delayed. So they're lagging indicators. So what I've done is I use my own methodology. And back in April on the 22nd, we went short to doubt was the day before the top using my notation, channel wave notation and, and other techniques. And then the market plunged very sharply down to the June 1st low, ran up and then um, on June the 3rd, we actually got the exact low, the day of the low, we got the low, and we ran it up. Now, we also got the, uh, it, within seven points, was this the one in, uh, yes, within seven points of the 16th of July high, we went short. So uh, then there's a, then you see what happened, it crossed negative. Then it turned around and I missed I, I spoke about the lowercase h that goes to the, I call it the dreaded h, they can go to a lowercase m pattern, another arch, and that's what it did. And then I said, if there's a very sharp break above the arch high, you've got to be careful because instead of retesting the lows, that's a breakout. What had happened so quickly, you remember that move of the 5th of September, massive move to the upside, the low was 26.603, but the day before the close was, 26.355, and that day it soared up to 26.836. So I missed get, uh, going along there, um, but we had long positions, uh, stocks, long stocks, just missed the Dow itself. And then we wanted to go short uh, right here. We missed the exact, I did what I put it in as a short, we just missed it by about 15 points or so. Um, and then we managed to get it about 100 points from the top, maybe even less. Um, back on the 19th of uh, September, went short, and um, and then this rebound here, um, we got some of it and we missed some of it, but we did have long positions. So what has happened is we went short twice because I thought that this was going to be the high. We went short via an option. We went short via the uh, the D DOG one to one short right here. Um, and that was around about the, I think it was around about the 19th of, of, of November. And I uh, had a very tight stop. We did get taken out on the re, it worked beautifully, it looked fantastic for three days. And then it turned around, we went higher. And I said, there's something wrong with this picture because if, how can you have three beautiful, um, indicated work beautifully three times 
it's very unusual to have it work the fourth time. Well, it was unusual because it, it, it went up, it went above, and it made, made a new high. Well, now this is the one that is going to be so important because uh, we got the sell signal right here at the, at the opening on the second. That was on Monday. At the opening, we went, went short. And even there, I had to put the rectangle, I had an oval, and I think I. This is an aberration in that all the other rectangles had the high, and then we counted the number of bars before we broke down with the moving average crossing negative. In this particular instance, if I had to do that, it just doesn't work. Look, if I move the rectangle right here, it took one, two, th two days, and the third day, it was underneath it. So I think that we really saw some technical, in the MACD and stochastic, we saw some technical weakness here. So something's going to either change or it's going to be exactly the same. Something will change if there's a new high over the next week and a half without going and retesting the low of, um, was it Tuesday? Tuesday, I think it was, yeah, uh, of the third. At 27,325, or at least getting close there, especially if today closes fairly weak and we get this uh, sell signal with the nine period crossing underneath the 14 period moving out. You don't usually have much more than the very next session that goes kaplop. And it, we'll see what happens. Okay, so the, the patterns changed because it took so long for this nine period moving average to turn down without those techniques. What, what would have happened if I said I'm waiting? Well, I would have waited till the end of the day today. Hundreds and hundreds of points off the top. Uh, so you have to use other techniques as well. I wanted to explain this because, look, if I show you the S&P, so the Dow right now is down 31. The S&P is down only $1.51. And it hasn't crossed negative. Look, there's the green line. There's the black line. A red candle so far. Day's young. Anything can happen. But it hasn't yet turned down. It looks like it will. I've seen this happen when I trade the, the two minute or, or the short time, time frames. Um, I've seen where this looks unbelievably negative price wise, and even MACD and Stochastic get this dawn nine period exponential moving average. The green line just doesn't close under it, and it just deflects, starts a whole new move to the upside. So um, let's watch that. And look at the QQQ. Um, even with. Um, down 10 cents a day, 202.33. Considering what it did the other day, that H pattern that I'd be anticipating, and we'll have to see what happens by the end of the day. Every single sell off has been met with buying, and every buying is being met with selling. So, um, IWM, let me show you the same thing. IWM, right now the IWM is trading up 13 cents at 160.92. This is a much better pattern. That 9 period moving average doesn't even show signs yet. It's got a little M shape. But the 14 period is still rallying, so there's no turn down yet. All right, so enough with that. Let me just go back. I like to keep it on the Dow chart so that I don't keep hitting incorrect buttons. Here we go. We've done that. I said that the gold contract is up four at 1484, and it's just in this look, arch formation, holds nicely with the higher right side low. Then it rallies up, and so you get your arch, you get your cup formation. I'm going to be talking about those formations, and then I'm going to talk about something that uh, we've been doing lately. I have no idea if it's going to be a successful venture or not, but we've been I've been adding screamers to this is S C R E A M E R S to my newsletter, and I'll explain what it is. I'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back. Basel Chapman, Dow's down 36, S&P's down dollar sixty-eight, And we're looking at gold, which is up uh, four. And I, I just said it's kind of neutral right now. I don't see anything as a trigger yet. I think there will be, but I don't see it yet. I will. There should be a leg D in the monthly chart, but we're going to have to wait for that. Uh, if you look at silver, SI, silver trading right now, uh, it's just it's a, not a good pattern at all. Okay. It's uh, up a Point twelve and seventeen point oh four. If you look at the EUR USD, and that is going to be very important because that is running quite nicely here, uh, but still within just a range in the euro dollar currency pair uh, weekly and monthly chart formations. It's at one point one one up point zero zero two. And if you look at the USD JPY, that is down probably up down just a little bit stuck in the range. It has made a leg. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at the end of the week on Friday, it's tomorrow, Friday, we've got, I'll be doing my show tomorrow at 8 o'clock at 8, 8 a.m. in the morning. Um, just got a real busy day. I won't be able to do my show at noon. So um, the uh, yen is down 0.17 and 108.69. And the dollar, actually, this is going to be very interesting because I don't know what they, they are doing, but we've had red candles all week. This is the fourth rate candle making lower lows and lower highs. It's not even a peak. It's just, and there's not even a trough yet. Just lower lows and lower highs from the 98.54 peak D. You remember peak D, how important that is? So what we're looking at here is that the dollar is going to make an H pattern. And when it tests the 97.11 uh, area from the 1st of September, that is going to be really important, and I wouldn't be surprised if the, if the uh, administration is somehow trying to push the dollar down. We'll see if that's going to work for how long. My monthly chart is still very positive. Now, I, I wanted to talk about this. The TLT, the TLT has rebounded off the low. It's still down 69 cents at 139.11. But I made the comment recently that I think we're stuck in a range, and each volatile day can sound right on 2% down, or two points up in the uh, uh, TLT, and then two points down. I just think it's, it's stuck in a range for now, and maybe a little bit lower, and yields can go a little bit higher. I just don't see too much at this point. On short-term trades, yep, there are short-term trades. You just made a peak D in the, in the uh, daily chart, and you've got a lowercase h pattern going to an m pattern here in the weekly. So yeah, I, I think that uh, yields can go down a little bit more. But if this market starts to really take it on the chin, like another 160 points down in the next day or two, and then another 220 points down, 
I think money will go back into the TLT. I just, it's, uh, you're fighting the, the one thing is the, the volatility of stocks forces money into bonds. And then you've got the Fed on the other hand. So you, there's, a, there's a conflict going on. So I just want to talk about screamer stocks. This is something I've been doing. I've been working on for, year, for years. I mean, but especially for the last couple of months. I introduced it to my uh, subscribers recently. Um, so there are stocks that I place here, and I just say these are stocks that are on my watch list. And sometimes I've, I've picked some, and sometimes they work, sometimes they haven't worked. Um, we had one that was BKCC. We got in, and, and we took a four cent, four cent loss on a four dollar ninety six uh, cents uh, stock. And it, and then I mapped out everything that I thought, and then all of a sudden yesterday it spiked up. It went to five dollars and eleven cents from the four dollars and ninety two cents area. A really nice percentage gain. Uh, and then uh, it's it went even higher today to five dollars and thirteen cents, and now it's pulling back. Uh, there was another one that I actually put on the list, and I, I it was a toss up between this and another one that we actually chose uh, two days ago, and I want. I, I thought I'd take it, and it was A U P H, A U P H. So it's over here, right here. So this is a stream of stock. Look how it just keeps going up and up and up. Leg C, it pulls back for a moment, and then it goes even higher, and it goes to. Let me see if I can do this very gently, and then it goes to uh, leg D. And there's your leg D. So here I am. I'm looking at it. It was right there, the 6.80 area that I saw it. It showed up on my screen uh, as a potential screamer. And I cho chose between yesterday's one and today. I chose another one, which I'm going to explain in a minute. Yesterday's closed at $8.39. It had a drug, not a drug approval, but a very favorable uh, thing on, on a, um, a lupus uh, treatment. Today it is up, it was up over 100 percent, it's up 96 percent at 16.53. I'm not complaining. It's, I, I'm, I'm thrilled because it means that I've started, you see, it's all very well for me because I, I can do this and I, I know my parameters, I can have bigger stops, I can say, great, I like it, but it's not doing what I wanted, but I still like it, I can add. But I can't do that for subscribers. I just will not see a subscriber have a huge loss just because I got carried away. I have very tight stops. When it works, it's really good. That's just the way it is. So we got another stock that we were looking at, had a really nice pattern. Um, we tried it yesterday. Some people were lucky because I said within the first three minutes, uh, you must buy it underneath this level. They waited patiently. They got it um, as it hit a low and then turned around. And they bought it then, so they're in it, because then the, the stop wasn't hit after that. But some people got in a little early, um, not, not, didn't break any rules or anything. They just got it a little early, and the stock went a little lower. And then it closed almost unchanged. I mean, in fact, it closed uh, about two, three cents lower. And I said, no, I like this. I like it, I like it, I like it. So we're going to buy it again today. For those people who didn't have it, you buy it. If you're still long, that's great. So we bought this thing at $5.93. It closed yesterday at 6. We bought it on the dip to 5.93. It went to 5.92. And just a minute ago, it hit 6.21. That's a 4.5 or uh, nearly a 4.8% uh, increase. So you can get out right now. I mean, that's the whole point of these are they call screamers because in a blink of an eye, they've done exactly what you want. You don't want to... Um, you, want to, you don't want to be wrong. For instance, the people that kept asking me about Clovis, and I said, please be careful. Clovis is, I, I don't want Clovis yet. It's just run up too high. You have to wait. What it did, 17.37, and it's trading right now. I would say 17.37 to $9.07 is a little bit of a dip. Yeah, it's a little bit, okay? Just on the days down 25%, let alone yesterday and the day before. So just you've got to be careful. This was a screamer. This was on my list. Some of you, some of you remember that we had um, Jason. I don't remember. Uh, one of our uh, one of our subscribers uh, had called in, or one of our TFNN listeners had wanted to know about it. Very good at picking these uh, on these buy attacks, and it, it did a great job for him. So um, now you got to be careful. Okay, so. Well, let me go through some other things. 
uh, there was another one I wanted to just make. Oh, CM, CMRRE was on my list. CMRE was on my list uh, two days ago. Uh, and then I thought, you know, it's going to do the same thing. It said BKCC it could have a nice move, but it's taken longer than, you know, I have the rule of 136. Uh, the best acceleration, like on the right here, is when you take just one bar to consolidate, or intraday you consolidate, or intraweek, whatever the bar is, intra-bar you consolidate, then you keep going higher. But if you do consolidate, you want no more than one or two bars, then you're making new high. But when you take a little too long, now you're starting to get into a different parameter. Now it's not a screamer anymore. It could become a screamer, but now it's a slow, it's, it's a snail. So you've got to be careful. Snail, screamer, I want the screamer. So uh, we'll see what happens. I just thought I'd mention that because uh, it's just another technique, trying to use different techniques. I'll be right back. We'll talk about some commodities. That was a trap and tight conditions hour. That was out of yes, it's down three. Be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So I had a question about um, about the streamers. What do you do with stops and all that? So it's almost like it's another newsletter because that's how much time I have to take uh, to write it up and, uh, and that sort of thing. So what I did today is I said if the stock is six, when I say six, six eighteen, raise the stop on half. I gave a level to to uh, for the stop, and then I gave a new number that if it can get to, uh, then everything gets raised and you can actually start to start to take some off. Um, e either way, I mean this is now in, in a sense you could be on your own because I've given you everything that you needed to look at. Now now you can say uh, you know I love it. this is a. 
this is a, the kind of percentage I would like to make every once in a while. Just doesn't have to be. It would be great if it's every day, but nobody can do that. But it, this is nice. So it, it's just it's it's a process, and that's that's what I wanted to point out here. It's it's actually a, a, a you know how I trade uh, the, the very short term. So this is a microcosm of trying to put everything together to say, um, hey, you can do this, but. If you're inclined to, if you have the time and you're a short-term trader and you're able to watch the market, hey, this is, it's, it's like a game. It's almost like fun because I'm making the stop so tight that you're either right or you're wrong. And if you're right, you're very right. If you're wrong, you're not very wrong. You just, I mean, a one, one or one and a quarter percent on a five or six dollar stock, you know, that's, uh, you, you can do that many times and be right just three times and that'll really alleviate the, the situation of being wrong many times. Okay, so I, I just want to show you this. Look, wheat is still, does wheat is still, it, it's held quite nicely off the lows. It's, still slow, it's not showing any real strength. Soybeans is a continuous contract. Now that's nice. I like this turnaround. Why? Because here you've got the MAGD, finally the histogram starting to improve, and you've got, uh, it, it hasn't crossed positive yet, but it's certainly starting to turn up. The stochastic was flat. I hate flat. It not only was it flat, but you don't get much flatter than this. The stochastic was 2.04. I mean, 2.04, that's like when it's positive, and I say it's great when it's above 97%. That's like saying 97.96%. Uh, 90, I mean, that's amazing. So that says, yep, this could be a bit of a rally, uh, but it's got that arch formation. So it's just coming off the arch, and at 887, up nine and, and three quarters, it really needs to get to the 80. 892 area, 896 to say, oh, okay, now maybe uh, the weekly can start to improve. And if you're looking at uh, Khan, Khan is trading right now at, um, it's up a half at 379. That, that attempted to do the same thing. Everything was exactly the same. And that's the reason why you can only treat these as starter positions, because you need you need to know that that weekly chart has more than just a little bit of an arch to, to overcome. It's got, you know, you need the technicals to be improving. So in this case, at 379, it has to get to the 386 area. And at that point, it's kind of cleared all resistances for the shorter term, not the weekly, but the shorter term. I also said I would look at, uh, KC, which is uh, the continuous contract for cattle. What is that doing there? Yeah, so this is the cattle continuous contract. And I looked at this the other day and I said, I think there's going to be a chance to go to a leg D. So now we're in leg D. And at 125.30, look at this. Um, You've got one, this is my Chapman Wave automated resistance levels, 10 minutes, that's 124.88, it went above that, now it's below that. No, no, yes, 125.30 was the high. The 120 minute chart over here has 125.95, 126.55 and 126.70. And the daily has 125 round number and you went to 125.30. There's a resistance level here, but this is so interesting, look. The MACD is still strong. The stochastic is flat at 91%. I like that. So, yes, there could be a bit of a pullback to between 119, uh, 122 to 119. If there is a pullback with very strong support at 117. But so far, these, these technicals are saying it'll be a modest pullback. Um, what did I want to look at? Was it LC, uh, live cattle? Yeah, live cattle. Remember, I talk about these rectangle formations. Have a look at this rectangle formation. I drew it in ages ago. You go over it, you go under it, you go, but the price keeps coming back into the middle. It's like gold. It's like uh, crude oil has been doing the same thing. Look, crude oil has this, look at this weekly, huge trading band between 60 and 50, 51, 50, 51, it's been right in the middle. You can make it even smaller. And yes, we did get that spike, exactly what we were talking about yesterday with the oval formation. Now it's going to be very interesting. Could crude oil have been making a Chapman Wave stalk leg, neck pattern, maybe a little bit higher, but then coming right back. It's at 58.37, having hit 59.12, continuous contract. Could it now come back and start trading in the 57s in the next week or so in this particular pattern? We're going to be watching that one very closely. I spoke about the TLTS. Oh, next thing I had a question about was the um, uh, Roku. Roku, GG wanted to know about Roku. Roku's trading, actually quite a few people wanted to know about Roku. Roku uh, Inc. 
streaming devices, peak C in the monthly chart, made a peak F at 176.55 all time high on the uh, week of the September the 23rd, plummets down to 98.08 uh, on the 27th of September, bounces back strongly to the 169 area. And now it's trading at uh, 150. So the big thing about this, see the rectangle that I drew there? So it's gone above it. Now it's gone below it. It's gone back into it. And that says the real magnet is the gap down. I would put 155 as very strong. Let me just do this. Roku. 155 is very strong resistance. Uh, no, nothing. Yeah, 155, right there. 155, 156 had been resistance is back again. And then way up to the 166 level. Now, what's really interesting is that the support, even the 120 minute chart is 155.94, and you're trading at 150.25 right now. But it has 113.88, way down as the, as the support level. So this is kind of stuck for now. Something's going on. Uh, it's not bad, it's not good. It's just stuck in the middle. We'll have to watch it, but I can just tell you this: in the H pattern, if it takes closes under 132, I think it goes right down to the 113 level. So this needs to try to, try to test some of the resistance levels. Uh, question about the IYT: the IYT is the Transportation Index iShares IYT. Um, just not good. It hasn't been confirming the Dow's rally, the S&P, the, the, the Q's, uh, the all-time highs. So I, I'm looking at this and thinking, wow. I'd like to have confirmation that transports, even though you've got mixed, so you've got airlines. I mean, you've got the XAL, uh, which is one thing. It's, it's completely different to, say, the, um, uh, the going to the rails. I don't have a rail index. I probably do. Dow Jones, Dow Jones rail index. Let me have a look at that. In fact, let me do this in a moment. Um, let me give me a second here. I'll just get it right here. Dow Jones rail index. There you go. It'll come up, I'm sure. Uh, I love Google with the uh, with a microphone, uh, except that when it works, it's got to work. Dow Jones Rail index. Dow Jones Rail index. US Railroads index is down 0 0.58. It's down 0 0.58. All right, well, what is it called? All right, we've got a break coming up. I actually like to check this out. Uh, oh, there it is. DJ, DJ USRR. No, no. I'll have to check this out because it would be nice to have that index. I always talk about it, but I'd like to actually see it. So the XAL is, is not doing all that well. And uh, even with crude oil stuck in the lower range, that's interesting. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. Dow is down. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks, we're back and. Uh... Yeah, this is a real tussle. Uh, let's see, I had a question about Spider S&P Oil and Gas Explor Exploration, XOP, trading at, uh, let's see, that is 20.58, down 8 cents. So is this buy? I looked at the XLE the other day. I looked at a lot. I'm, I keep saying, wouldn't it be nice to get a sector right at the low and be able to ride it all the way up? Um, slow period, just like it bought, bought Bank America um, in December of last year, and just held it, uh, let it go, let it go. Uh, but you know what? I need a drink of tea. <coughs> Whoosh. All right, so we've got a C minus. In the, in the XOP, and now it's running. So this is a leg A. I, I had a problem with the uh, <clears throat> the whole area of this this particular series of uh, um, energy oil, uh, the exploration, uh, the multinationals. Uh, you know, I think they're going to be on a run at some point. But I don't know if it's yet. Maybe it'll be end of December, beginning of January. I think they're trying. Look at this little doji candle right here. <clears throat> on, a, on a Friday tomorrow, see what happens. If there's no new low tomorrow uh, on Monday uh, or Tuesday below 20, 19.90, uh, and all of a sudden by Friday, I, it needs speed. So a Friday week from <clears throat> this Friday, if there's a, a push below, uh, below, uh, the 1990, that's terrible. <clears throat> but if there's a rally that goes to 2150, you're at 2060 right now. So that's like 80 cents or 90 cents. And then by Friday, you're actually testing the 2185 level. <clears throat> I'd say that's a start. So this is what I'm going to say. I, it's nothing that I would actually take a position in now. Yeah, I, I know that for some people, you use options. I would look at a, a two, I'd go close to the money as possible. I wouldn't go right out. It's just silly to waste money and go 22 thinking, well, what a score. If I get it at 22, I can pay maybe, uh, you know, 34 cents. And uh, wow, if it gets to 22, you're up at a dollar 34. Depends when, but you know what I mean? I, I just don't, I wouldn't do that. I'd rather treat it as a, a, an option um, that you, you could buy the 20. You'd be paying a premium, so you're probably paying 92 cents right now. Uh, well, it depends on December. I wouldn't buy December. I'd buy January, so it's going to be more. So it's about a dollar. Say for a dollar, you could get, um, so for like 100, 200, 300 bucks, you could buy a couple of, of, of calls looking way out, 
I'm sure that at some point you get close to your money back uh, because there could be some pop up at some point above the 20.50 area. Um, so well, it's at, at 2054. So I mean above the 21.50 area. And that, that would be very good. So that's just a way of doing it without putting up a lot of money and just finding out with your real money that you've tied up, whether it's right or wrong. Now, the other thing is, yep, we could wait until it pops above the 9 EMA, but we've seen too many pop-ups. Look how many pop-ups it's had above the uh, 9 EMA and failed. And this is a Chapman, re great example of a restart, peak A, peak A minus, peak A, peak A minus, and it does it again. And finally, it succeeds. And when it succeeds, it usually goes to D. This only went to a C. That was very negative. So now I'm going to say at 20.53, if you want to put a little money to work and you don't want to use options, you're, you're early at 20.53. If today was like green candle yesterday, if today's at 20.85, I'd say, you know what? I'd feel much more comfortable. You could buy a little bit right here, and your stop needs to be, it's a $20.52 uh, stop. Well, it'd be 20, let's call it 21. You had a dollar, a dollar and a half risk. But at this particular point, for a dollar and a half risk at 20.52, I think you have a greater chance of retesting 20. So you've got to be prepared for that. So I'm just going to say XOP, put it on your list. I probably would rather buy the trend when it's you, you've got higher highs and higher lows, even if you're, under, you're overpaying because it's way above the 20 level. But at least you've got the direction right. Otherwise, you lose it three times in. You've lost yourself, you know, uh, 12 or 15 percent. Whereas I'd rather I'd rather be buying it on the way up because then you've got the tide with you. Every time it pulls back, it should come back higher after that. So just be careful. Here I'd be a little careful about. I'd even wait until Monday. Wait until Monday, let's look at it again, because it's down 15 cents, but it had a high today of 20.96. Now it's at the low of the day of 20.51. It doesn't sound like much, but look at this red candle. It should have been a positive candle. Days young, it could happen. So hold off, but if you're really looking to, to, to buy this area, buy the, the, the January uh, 20 calls, you'd be paying up for it. You could try the 21, maybe 21's fine. Uh, you, you'd be paying less for actually maybe 21 because you're paying less for it, and if it's going to work, it's going, we're talking about 2250 to 20 to 23 over six weeks if it's going to work. Okay, think about that. I hope that works out for you. Just uh, some real questions, quick questions here. Um, let me just do this real quickly here. Uh, XLF I had a question about the XLF. Yep, the XLF is rallying. You remember? Like, should I have done it here? And let me just show you, I've already got it all notated. It's the same thing. It's almost the same chart. This is the Bank of America, which we long. Look, in a rectangle formation, a rectangle formation, even though you had the, the cup that dreaded, um, this is a drop bucket pattern, Chamway drop bucket pattern, where it could sh drop sharply. The rule of thumb is that if it drops from the, the, the left side lip to the base of the cup, if it rallies to close to or at a new high, and then a new recovery high after the left side, and then pulls back over one third to a, to a half of that distance, there's a real good chance you're going to test the low. Well, the low was 32.42. And look what happened. Yes, three days ago, the low was 32.55. That's really close. If it took it out, I would say you could even go one to one to the downside. So using the XRF as an example, Wait until this rectangle, let's go back to the, I just wanted to show you the pattern. The rectangle pat formation can last a lot longer than your patients. And we've got a rectangle pattern here. We've gone over it, we've gone under. There you are, now you've gone under it. In this case, it went lower. Now it's bounced back into the middle. Watch out, at 29.88, I think the XLF, the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, is having a little bit of a problem here in the sense that the, the yields are going up and down, up and down, up and down. So it's kind of stuck in this range. And until it breaks one of the levels, if it breaks 29.30 on the downside, closes under that, it's going to fill in quite a few of the gaps on the left side uh, down. And if it goes up, then you're looking at another arch formation. And I don't think it's going right now much higher than 30.26 was the high on the 2nd of December. And this makes it leg C. I don't think we make a peak C until next Friday. If there's no high above 
uh, 30.26. If there is a high above that, it extends the weekly chart and the monthly chart, which is in leg C. And that's going to be good. And that could target the 30.35 to 30.55 area. Hope that helps you on the question of the XLF. Uh, next question I had was, oh, we've got a break coming up. Final break. And then we have the, the last segment. And then you have Steve Rhodes, you have Dave White and Tom O'Brien. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Let me just mention this. Uh, in fact, let me make this a little bit bigger here. Resize, make it bigger. So uh, the uh, the meetup that I was going to be uh, speaking at on, uh, on, there it is, on this past Tuesday had to be postponed because of the snow. Uh, so the Investors Business Daily Boston Investors Group Holiday Party Meeting, uh, MIT E55-395, Boston Investors Group and Boston IBD Potluck Holiday Party and Talk Tuesday, December the 10th, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. Potluck Reception and Networking, 7 till 7.30 and in Seeking Investment Opportunities for 2020 by Basil Chapman, MIT Building E51, Room 395. I don't, do we usually go to three? I don't think we go to three hundred and ninety. Anyway, room three hundred and ninety-five is the third floor. So I hope to see you there. This is in Cambridge, Mass. And um, the, what's the address here? Oh, the address is now. I think it's seventy or seventy-seven. Seventy, I think. Memorial Drive, uh, but it's off Memorial Drive. You go to the little street behind it. I'll give you all the information. I'll tell subscribers as well. Um, so I hope to see you there Tuesday night. 
the um, 10th of December. And uh, go to the front page, go to IBD, Boston Investors Group Holiday Party Meeting. Uh, just check it out and Google it, you'll find all the information. So a couple of things I wanted to talk about just briefly as we're about to wrap up. So the Dow, INDU, the Dow right now is trading down 40 at 27,610. You've got a crossover the two moving averages and the MAGD has already been down for a while. Stochastic's way down 34%. It's amazing how resilient this market has been uh, with all the news. And each time it pulls back, this this a, a rally attempt. Will you be able to fill in this island reversal gap, uh, gap down from three days ago? And then two days ago, you gapped up yesterday. And now we've made a slightly higher high. You stopped right, still right at the trend line resistance there. So we'll watch it closely. And the VIX index, let's give the TVIX, because I think that just gives a better reflection of what investors are doing. It, at 70.30, yeah, let's go to the VIX. VIX, as you're about to wrap up and go to Steve Rose, Steve Rose and Dave White and Tom O'Brien, uh, you're down 10 cents at 14.70, hit a high the other day of 17.99. Ho hum, nothing much to see here, but I suspect that investors are to start putting money into the VIX index as some kind of security here because with impeachment, that's not a good sign. It does make for some uncertainty. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. in the morning, Eastern Time, for my show to be recorded to be played at noon. Have a great day. Check out my